Oh, welcome, welcome. I'm here to teach you something. Hello, hello, my name is Sarisha and I'm here to teach you something. Today we are going to be doing part two of Embroidery Basics. So if you have not already seen the Embroidery Basics part one, check that video out. It will be in the description linked and all of that kind of stuff, but check that video out first and then come back, watch this, uh, so that you know kind of what I'm talking about in the, the learning part of this video. Um, but before we get into any of that, we are going to be doing a word of the day today at Bridge, like we do every single week. Uh, so today's word of the day is cohesive or cohesion. So if you're going to say cohesive, it's actually an adjective and it means uh, characterized by causing cohesion. So then we want to know what cohesion is. Cohesion is a noun and it is the action or fact of forming a united whole. So you want to take a bunch of things together and make them cohesive. Uh, you want to have an art pi picture look cohesive, a room if you're decorating, then you're definitely going to want to create some cohesion uh, between the different pieces that you pick. So those are a couple of different ways that you can use the word cohesive or cohesion. All right, so before we get into any learning of the things, uh, aka doing part two of embroidery, uh, I just wanted to share a little bit why I'm actually doing this. So I think I may have shared in a previous video that I, at the beginning of the pandemic, I actually bought myself a sewing machine and I've been learning how to sew, but I also bought an embroidery set and I've been learning how to embroider. So I really been enjoying it. I've been embroidering lots and lots of different things. I know I showed you last week some of the artwork on my wall. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've been really enjoying it and I just really wanted to share this with you uh, and thought that it would be a really fun, you know, fun activity to, to try if you haven't tried embroidery or if you've always wanted to. And with that, let's get into part two of Embroidery Basics. So in part two of embroidering, we are going to be using similar supplies, but we're going to add a couple of things. So first thing being, you're going to want a pencil, you're going to want something to cut with, some scissors, you're going to want your embroidery thread and the embroidery needles, same as last week. But instead of using a plate like we did last week, so this is what we did last week, practiced the basic stitches, we are going to actually be using an embroidery hoop today. So you're going to want an embroidery hoop or you can use a canvas. I personally really like canvases. I think I said this last week because they are already stretched for you. It's something that you can just take when you're done. You can just put it up on the wall. Whereas with an embroidery hoop and whatever, you know, fabric, so you're going to want some fabric that you use, you're either going to have to keep it in the embroidery hoop or you're going to take it out and then you're going to have to figure out some way to display it. So I really like canvases because it's just a one-stop shop. Uh, this is an example, I think I showed this last week, but this is an example of something that I made in an embroidery hoop and I've just left it and I now hang it on my wall. But I like reusing embroidery hoops, so that's why I also like canvases. This is an example I showed last week of something that I made in a canvas and I just hang it on my wall. This is also, just so that you all know, this design, uh, I got inspiration off the internet, <laughs> as you do, uh, but this design is actually made with just the stem stitch, if you remember from last week. So it's just the stem stitch, very simple, and I just drew out the line design and followed it. And just before we even begin, no, you do not have to, you know, be super artistic. You do not have to have a bunch of designs in your mind. Online, there is a plethora of examples, of ideas, of designs. You can really get super creative. So do not get worried about, oh, I don't, 
you know, I don't have any ideas. Even really, really simple things like a, a moon or a flower or a heart, we're gonna do a flower today, uh, looks really cool when you've embroidered it. Or simple things like circles. So I think I showed last week a jacket that I have been embroidering. And this is just an example of, I put the embroidery hoop on my jacket so you can see what it looks like. And then I would add something right here. But on this design, I just have a bunch of circles uh, and I'm just gonna continue adding until I basically am complete, <laughs> which who knows when that will be. Okay, let me show you how an embroidery hoop works. So an embroidery hoop is made up of two different parts, the inside ring and the outside ring. The inside ring, just a very simple circle. It's just most embroidery hoops are made out of wood. Some are made out of plastic, but it's just a circle. And then the outside hoop is made of a larger circle with this little piece on the top. And the way that this works is you twist it and it either, depending on the direction, gets tighter or looser. And you're going to put this on top of this one with whatever fabric, whatever you are going to embroider in between these two different hoops. So I have a piece of fabric. I like to save a lot of scrap pieces of fabric. This is just actually old curtains that we had, but you know, you can use an old t-shirt, you can use an old rag, uh, even like a towel. You can really embroider a lot of different things or your clothes that you're gonna wanna wear again. That is definitely something that you can use to embroider. So I already drew out a very simple flower shape and I used this hoop as a guide for how big I want to make it. Uh, but once you have whatever you want um, drawn onto your fabric, so you're going to want to take whatever the fabric is, whatever your design is, and you're going to want to gently lay it over a smaller circular hoop, the one that is just a hoop. And then you're going to want to take this other piece and you're just going to want to put it on the top. And it kind of the sides splay out like this. Now this is very loose. Um, if I were to push, it would slide out. So that is where this mechanism at the top comes in. You want to make sure that the fabric is really as tight as possible. The tighter, the better, the easier it is to work with, to make something when uh, your fabric is super, super tight. So I'm gonna make sure that it's super tight. I'm going to push this top hoop and then I'm going to twist this and tighten it as much as it will go. It probably won't tighten all the way. It's not gonna like close, but you're gonna to wanna to tighten it hand tight, as tight as it will go. And then you're really not gonna have that much room for the fabric to slip around. That is how you put your fabric inside the embroidery hoop. Pretty simple. So with a canvas, that is all kind of done. See how it's very tight. When you push in and there's not a lot of give, it's gonna be pretty you know, easy to, to embroider into this. Same kind of deal, you would wanna take a pencil or a pen or something and lightly draw whatever design you're gonna be doing on your canvas and then the instructions from here on out are going to be pretty similar. So I'm going to focus on the embroidery hoop, but just know you can do exactly what I'm doing on this hoop on a canvas. So the next step is to pick your colors. I'm just going to take my embroidery needle and I'm going to, I like to do kind of uh, enough where it's not going to get in my way, but not um, too little where I feel like I'm going to have to be changing my thread all the time. So just taking about this much and I'm going to, I'm going to thread the thread, <laughs> the embroidery thread through the needle. And we talked about this last time. There are two different ways to start. You can either just tie a knot or you can tie a knot 
once you start. So I'm going to tie a knot once we start, since I showed you in the last video what it looks like when you're just tying a knot and then doing the stitches. So you can see here, my outline of my flower is very light. That is just so that I can follow the lines, but uh, that it's not going to show up when I actually make my design. So I'm going to start by, like we did in the last video, I'm going through the back and out through the front. Now this is different than the last one where we had pre-made holes. Now the fabric is a little bit thinner. It's a little bit more forgiving than paper. So it's okay if I, um, you know, have to poke around a little bit. So I have on the back, I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail. I'm gonna hold this tail down with this finger. I'm gonna go back through on my line. And then I'm going to pull it out on this side. And I'm going to tie a knot. And then I'll just snip my end. Now I am going to be doing the stem stitch. And so I'm gonna come back, I probably should have left a little bit more give, but I'm gonna come back on the outside of this stitch and come back through. And then I'm going to follow my line all the way up to my flower, doing what I taught in the last video, which is the stem stitch. So I'm holding, see how I can kind of see where it's gonna come back up. Holding it so that it goes in the middle. And then I'm just going to go all the way up this line. All right, so I'm coming toward the end and throughout this entire time, I'm just trying to make my stitches as easy, even as possible. I'm getting to the end. I'm not gonna go all the way up because I, I don't think I'm gonna like how that looks. So I'm just gonna go back down, kind of thinking that it's a half stitch going through the back. Now, because this is not on something that is gonna get a lot of layer and tear, I'm not too worried about, you know, my knots being really, really tight or super secure. I just want it to make sure that it's not going to fall out. So now we have our stem. I'm gonna take the same piece of string and I am going to now do the leaves. Now there are specific stitches that you can do for leaves, but I'm gonna keep my leaves kind of open and I'm just going to stitch around the edge of the leaf. I'm actually gonna do something kind of fun. I'm gonna do two different colors. I'm gonna start with this green color that I have, and then I'm gonna go back in with a lighter green color. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to do a running stitch around the edge of my leaves. I'll do a stem stitch on the inside of my leaves, but I'm gonna do a running stitch on the outside. And then when I go back in with the color, when there is, just a reminder, this is the running stitch. So in these little spaces, I'm going to actually put a whole different color. You could also do a split stitch here. That would look pretty uh, as well. It's again, it's just kind of up to you and what you, you know, want your piece to look like. And here, instead of tying and starting over again, I'm actually going to thread my way through these little loops and then start back down at the bottom again. And this make, makes your work look very clean on the back. And so there's not a bunch of threads going everywhere. And then I'll just start again and do my running stitch on the outside of my leaf. So the running stitch is a very even stitch. And then you are coming back up, even spacing. And then instead of going back, which is a back stitch, I would I'm just gonna jump space. I'm just gonna do that all the way around and then I'm going to do the other flower as well off camera. Um, but I'm done with this green now, so I'm gonna turn it over and I'm going to tie a little knot. 
And then the next step is going to be picking another green color. Now I have quite a bit of green, of this dark green left, so I will be saving it. Sometimes I have pieces that really don't need that much color and I don't like wasting embroidery thread. So I will save this and use it for something else. So I'm gonna look in my little box and I'm going to pick a color that is slightly different. Do I wanna go light or do I wanna go dark? I'm gonna go a little bit darker. So I know I'm not going to need a lot of this because I'm really just going on the, around the outside of the leaves. So I'm really not going to cut a lot of this. So I'm going to look on this side and I'm going to start right here, right at the end of this stitch, this first running stitch. And what I'm going to be doing... I am going to be basically doing another running stitch of this other color, but what it's gonna look like is that I did a back stitch with two different colors. So the leaves will be, the outside of the leaves will be two different colors. I could also go back and I could accent different parts of my piece with this other color, but I just kind of thought it would be fun to have a little pop of something just a little bit different and so see, I'm doing just a running stitch, but it's filling in the holes, so it's looking like I'm doing the back stitch. All right, now we have the body of the flower made. So the next part I'm going to do is the internal part. Now you can do a couple different things for this. You can do what's called a French knot. I'm not going to teach you a French knot today, so I'm not going to do it want to use the stitches that I've taught you. Uh, so we've kind of done a running stitch. We've kind of done a back stitch. I've kind of gone over that. We've done the stem stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a split stitch for this internal part of the flower. So I have my first stitch. It's very small. And then I'm going to come up through the middle of that stitch. And then I'm going to make another small stitch. And when I come back up, it's going to be in the middle of that same stitch. And splitting it in two. And I'm just going to go right around the circle. All right, so the inside of the flower is done. And now all we have is just the petals. Before we do this, I'm going to be teaching you a new stitch. So All right, so we have our handy dandy plate here and I'm gonna show you how to do the lazy daisy, the daisy stitch. So I'm gonna go up through one of the holes and I'm going to go back down through that exact same hole. Now, if you remember from the chain stitch last week, if I pull, it's gonna just come out. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you hold it so that it doesn't come out. So you're going to the bottom, I'll just show you. So we're making kind of like a, this shape. Just like a flower petal. So go back down through the hole, you're gonna hold it, and then you're gonna come out through the top of that shape, through the loop, you're gonna wanna make sure that if it goes too tight, it's just gonna go like a straight line. So you want to keep a little bit of give on either side so it looks good. It's actually, see how this is twisted? So I would actually take it off and I would make sure that this is not twisted. I'm gonna show you again because this is probably a little bit confusing. So I make it really loose. And then I would go back down on the other side of that shape. And this is the daisy stitch and it's great for petals. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna go up through this little hole right here. I'm gonna go back down right through the hole or right next to it if you can't find that hole. I'm gonna come back up through the apex, through the top of the loop. 
I'm gonna leave some room and then come back down right outside of that petal. And I'm gonna show you this on the actual thing. So I'm going to put my needle back down through the fabric. I'm gonna pull it through. And I, I have this one, that wasn't clear, I have this one just regular tied because I think it'll just be easier with this stitch specifically. I'm going to come back up through the top of the petal. I'm going to pull, keep some loose. Again, if I pull too tight, it looks like that. So I'm gonna keep it loose. and then come right on the other side of that thread, of that loop. And there you go. So now I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm almost done. I think if I did this one again, I probably wouldn't do the daisy stitch again um, with such a big flower. I do them more like for the small flowers, um, but it's fun to try new things more. And I did have to get more string, which is totally fine. I just tied it off and then grabbed some new string, started it again. And we are all finished. So now what you could do is you could cut off the excess, you could fold it all down, glue it, put this up, or you can take this off. So we just finished. Uh, you can put this onto a patch. You could have this fabric be an actual shirt, a bag, some jeans, whatever you want. Uh, you could take this off, you can glue it on some cardboard, put it up on the wall. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this or you can do everything on canvas. Thank you for joining me in part two of Embroidery Basics. A reminder that part one was just doing the stitches and then obviously today we made something. Uh, if you have not already, please subscribe, like this video, let us know what you'd like to see next week. And as always, wash your hands, clean up after yourself and take a sip of water. Bye. Bye.